Welcome to the TBS Film Room. Today we're going to be taking a look at UConn's offense, how they sequence their play calling, how they want to kind of lean on their run game and their offensive line, and how you can kind of see that play out on the field. So we've got some clips from their game, first game against Wagner where they're going to have the same starting quarterback and also their latest game against UCF. So you can kind of see um, some concepts they like to, to run a lot and uh, get a little better feel for kind of what you may see this Saturday streaming not live so we'll kind of open with one of their favorite concepts they love running counter um, they typically like to run it with a guard in the wing or the tight end so here they're motioning them across and so what they're going to end up doing we'll draw it up first we're going to be down 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 Guard kick here, and then he's going to wrap for the inside. So now let's watch it full speed. And then we'll run it back, watch it again in slow motion here. So like we drew up, this side is all going to be down block. So He's got a guy technically head up here, so he's got to take it. So there, he'll be down. His rule is inside. With the guard taking him, he could maybe give him a hand. We'll kind of see what that guy does post-snap. But then his inside track will take him back to this backer. There, he kicks the end man on the line of scrimmage. And then he wraps back up inside for the other inside backer here. So right here, he shifts inside. Now this guy knows I got a clean path because this is a down block. We got good angles. The center's gonna have to make a pretty tough block here. The tackle gives him a hand. He kind of seals up the pulling guard hole and, sh and hinges back. The coach I worked with called that a gap seal hinge. And then you get a pretty big hole. And this back is uh, one of two backs they use a lot number one and number 34, and they're both pretty good players. So then we'll, we'll go, this is early in the game uh, against UCF. They're going to run a little bit different way, but for these guys, it's all the same. They'll kind of window dress it with something else. This is something they'll show a little bit, is these kind of, this is an overload formation here. He's off the wing, so you have to have two on. So if they wanted to throw the ball, this guy's covered up. He's not eligible. They'll motion, try to get them to kind of overload this side and see if they can bring two blockers back this way and create an advantage. So again, down, 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 kick. He does a pretty good job right here at the UCF in man taking on this block and forces the H back to kind of go outside, but the back makes a pretty good cut here and picks up a pretty good gain. First down on second and seven. So, and this is a, this is a concept you're going to see a lot on Saturday. They like to run the counter. SMU had some success with the exact same type of counter last weekend where they pull the guard and their tight end that's lined up as a wing or H back, kind of whatever you want to call them. But they pulled those two. They had a lot of success with that. So I'd imagine you'll see UConn run that quite a bit. And here's another look at it. Now this is a little bit different. They have an inline tight end now. So they're going to be running more of the kind of old school counter. Down, down, down. Guard still kick, but now we're going to bring the tackle here. So you can see pre-snap, you kind of get you, this is a good call for the look right here. And you get about a 13 yard run on first down. I'd expect to see a, a heavy dose of counter this weekend. 
another play, um, another one of their staples is, so they, they like to mix, so counter is a gap run play where guys are kind of blocking gaps. I'm blocking down. Uh, so gap run plays, you typically are blocking down on one side and pulling guys, right? So that's kind of a gap run. Uh, they also like to mix in zone runs. Um, they'll run a little bit of wide zone, and then we'll show you kind of variations off the zone scheme. So wide zone is kind of, you know, we've seen USF run it. Everyone's stepping right. It's that outside zone stretch play that the Broncos and Alex Gibbs and Sh Mike Shanahan and all those guys made so popular. They haven't had a ton of success with wide zone this year, but it's something they'll run in a variety of different ways. So here, uh, some people teach it differently. I've been places where we've taught it. I'm just trying to hit the C gap, right? A, B, C gap. If it's filled, I bounce. The true wide zone teams are running like, sometimes I'll read the first helmet outside the center here. So if I see this helmet flash here, I know I got to cut back. If I see this get reached, I stay outside. So this is a play, this is a play that's pretty uh, complex, and that's why those wide zone guys feel like you got to practice it a ton. So it's got to be one of your only run plays if you want to be really, really good at it. But you can still get some success with it just by blocking it upright. So that's kind of a look at it almost out of a – He's a wing, but functionally it's, you know, tied in on the line right here. Look, they'll come run it with, to the tr to a true wing. Again, I haven't had real great success with this scheme yet. And then you'll see it here. Kind of, a, it's pretty much the same scheme out of the two back look. It looks more like a, you know, you may call it like a sweep, but it's really, all it is is really outside zone or wide zone. With this, with this back being functionally that H back. All right, so, so they run zone. So then another compliment, if you're going to run an H-back a lot, you run outside zone, you're typically going to run inside zone. And a compliment to the inside zone with the H-back is split zone, so split flow zone, or uh, some people call it slice. That was, that was the name that um, Nevada and Chris Alt and the Colin Kaepernick pistol teams that were really, really good at running the ball. I believe they called it slice. So split zone is I'm running inside zone. And right, typically on inside zone, this is where the zone read is typically run is inside zone, right? And people run read down with everything, but initially it was inside zone. I leave him unblocked. I read him. Well, if you don't want to read him, which you can, and you'll see later on, they'll run the quarterback. They didn't run this guy as much in game one. So I'll be interested to see how much he runs this weekend. Um, but last weekend to see if they ran their quarterback a ton and it's kind of off these kind of schemes. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit, but instead of reading him, you bring this guy across and kick him out. So you can almost create a big cutback lane if you get a good kick and it sets up some other things we'll get to. So this is zone slice. They're getting this kind of tight bunch right here. Bring that's still the H back there. They bring him across, kick out the end man. Run it again here. Similar formation. They'll do it out of this formation. I think you'll see one coming up where it's just these guys are wide and he's just still a wing. But still, it's slice. Back does a good job here, just sticking his head down, churning his legs, and ends up scoring there. But it's just his own slice or split zone. Here it is against UCF. 
again, UCF did a pretty good job at end taking on this block and giving it some trouble. And if it bounces, you see you got somebody coming out here to help with that. Coaching point on split zone. Did you tell this guy you want him to be flat and kind of get his helmet inside that guy's helmet? So the UCF player played it really tough. So what's your answer when this guy wants to play it like that? Right? So if this guy wants to play inside and jump inside like that, what's your answer? Well, we'll see shortly. So here's another example, split zone. These guys are coming downhill and playing it really tough. So what's the answer to that? Well, this is how you, this is kind of one of their answers. So he's going to go out here, probably looking for this force player or really the first thing in the alley. He's going to run like he's running split zone. So he's running like I'm going to kick the end. And then the last second, I'm going to avoid him and become another blocker. And right here, it's just become zone read. So now read. It's kind of muddled. So he gives it, but notice how he avoids him and is looking in the alley there. And again, this back's pretty good. 34, uh, Mensa, I believe is his name. He's a pretty good player. But if they're playing that, if you run in that zone slice, that's, that split zone and they're playing it really tough on the end, you know, this is one of your answers. So here's another, another kind of look at it, a better look at it really. So I'm going, it looks just like split zone right now. This guy's jumping inside like he did previously. We'll now avoid. And now the quarterback keeps it. All right, so right here, that's the guy. He's playing this split hard. Well, now I just avoid him. He's in the backfield. I've got leverage right here, that quarterback. And now i got a lead blocker out on the edge. Kind of similar look to the one they ran on the goal line earlier. Same thing. Make it look like the split zone. Avoid him at the last second. There you go. If this block gets out a little bit longer, you've got 91, who's a pretty good player as well. Coming for the safety, and now you got a really good play. Instead, you don't hold the block quite long enough. But you see the schemes kind of building. They kind of build on each other, their schemes, which is kind of the sign of a good offense. When you're kind of building on schemes, it's a sign of good scheme, at least. Not necessarily a good offense, because they're not really a great offense but and so then what's the what's the next answer right you got to be able to throw the ball a little bit right so how can we incorporate the stuff we're already doing into the passing game well right here this looks like split zone right to to this point right here it looks just like split zone now I'm gonna do my avoidance again, and now I'm getting into the flat. So unfortunately, not a great throw here, but here's a scheme. Go, it's just a simple flood concept probably. He's in the flat, he's running the out. Right here, he's wide open. If you put it on him, that's an, that's an easy, five, six yards, maybe more. Unfortunately, you get a bad throw and this thing gets housed. And that's how you can go from uh, being down 14 to being down 42 in a, in a hurry. But here's same idea, third and two. Right now, it looks just like split zone. Avoid the end. 
Easy throw to the flat for a first down. So they're showing you, you know, kind of one look, and it could be kind of three or four different plays off of it. And then kind of the final thing they'll do kind of to help with their run game is they'll do some RPO stuff and some kind of packaged, not necessarily packaged plays, but they'll, they'll give the quarterback kind of act, free access throws. So here they'll have a run called. And they also have a bubble called up top. So all the quarterbacks got to do is look, do I have numbers out here? So right now I got one, two, three. When I'm counting numbers, I'm typically looking within five yards of the ball. If this guy's, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't include him in the count, make him run up and play because he won't be blocked. They'll block these two guys typically uh, depending on coverage, but I count one and two here. So right now I have a numbers advantage. I've got two blockers for these two and I got my, one of my running backs here out in the slot, which, you know, note that when he's out here, he's probably going to get the ball or uh, they brought him, they brought him back for reverses and things like that. So if he's in the game at receiver, you may want to note that, but I'll put him one-on-one -on -one with this guy. That's all I'm trying to do in the run game anyways, is get my running back one-on-one -on -one with the safety. So I'll take that. So right here, all the quarterback does, he sees the numbers. They have an inside zone called here. We'll just pull it out and throw the bubble. And for some reason, he's coming down inside. If he just blocks his corner, you have a really good play. Instead of him having to avoid it, he might be able to hit something full speed. So they do that, and they also have free access throws included. So what's a free access for throw? So the, the play call here is counter. The counter we've talked about with the guard and the wing. Down here, he's just going to run a simple hitch. If the corner is off or bailing, usually you kind of want to look pre-snap. Is he if he's off, the, the quarterback has the ability to take this because it's a easy, they're they're basically giving you free access to five or six yards by him being so far off. I'll just turn and throw the hitch out here. So they kind of tag a free access throw. It's almost like a pre-snap RPO. Um, everyone wants to call everything an RPO nowadays. But this is kind of, this was kind of one of the, it's, this was kind of the genesis of the RPO. You'll see a lot of, you saw, um, this is similar to the stuff like Favre used to do where he just pull the ball out and throw it out there, which is kind of probably a, one of, at the early stages of the RPO in people's minds. It's kind of, I got a run play called, but I can still throw this pass out there. So here there's run play called. Quarterback's got free access. He just takes it. Picks up about seven or eight, looks like, depending on who this guy is. On first down. Which is, you know, ideal, right? So another example of it here. Again, he's off and bailing. I'm just running a curl here. Counter's called again. Quarterback pulls it, throws the free access. Receiver makes the guy miss. Gets down to about the five. So this is all kind of to the quarterback's discretion. But they will run some actual, you know, RPOs, some legitimate RPOs. So um, they've had very success with it. Uh, you can kind of, <laughs> this play is uh, kind of a microcosm of the UCF game here. So they're going to run RPO. He's reading here, I believe. I'll let's use some of the technology here. 
He's reading this guy, I'm pretty sure. So, he kind of comes up here. So, he's got kind of a skinny post back here behind him that he might be in some trouble if he throws this. Or he's now he decides he's going to have to wait to throw. And the ball just comes out of his hand. And UCF gets the ball back here. But that's the idea behind this RPO is if he comes a fill for the run, throw it behind his head to the skinny post. I'm pretty sure this is an RPO as well. It was a give, but this is one uh, some people like to tag on the backside of zone plays. Is the tight end running to the flat? And I'll, I'll basically read him. So I can almost control him. If it's man coverage, what they're thinking a lot of times, this is something I believe the Cowboys started to do a lot with Jason Witten um, in the year, the couple years before he retired. I don't know if they're still doing it with him now now that he's come back but this the idea behind it is we're just going to run zone so right here my five linemen we got four down linemen two backers if i can get him out of the box by making the tight end run a flat now I've got a big numbers advantage, especially if I'm reading him. So since it is an RPO, they'll block him. So that kind of that's your numbers advantage, right? Instead of reading this guy, we'll read this guy. He kind of widens out a little bit with the line and going this way. And they just run the inside zone. But I'm pretty sure this is a run pass option, especially because it's zone and they're kind of blocking back here. So now you got numbers in the box, basically. And now this is similar to the first one, but that safety has crept up on the line of scrimmage. This is the counter. And again, it's just kind of one of those nights for them where they had some stuff open, they just couldn't quite hit it. So right here, the counter look. And it really might be like a pin pull zone type look, really. If you look here, this is kind of an interesting wrinkle. You have the tackle and center both getting out. So this might be really pin pull zone. I said counter initially, but it's probably pin pull. And the quarterback says to pull it and throw it. And a poor throw causes it to go incomplete. So it'll be interesting to see how much RPO and quarterback run game stuff they do this weekend with a different quarterback coming in. So the guy that played against UCF ended up playing pretty well, I thought. But he was playing with like a broken clavicle for three quarters or something insane. So the week one starter will be back in. They didn't do as much of this stuff with him. I don't know if that's because it was game one or if because that doesn't suit him. So it'll be interesting to see if that kind of stuff comes on offense 
I expect them to run the ball, lean on the run, and then do a lot of play action and passing off of the run game. So that'll be something to kind of look for on Saturday. If USF can stop the run, which they've had some trouble with in uh, a few of their games this season, then they sh- that should really help them uh, shut down the UConn offense. If they have trouble stopping the run, that's kind of exactly where UConn wants to be, probably controlling the ball, controlling the clock, and um, run, and then being able to stick with their game plan of running the ball and then keeping the ball out of their quarterback's hands a little bit. So that'll be an interesting matchup to see. Whoever wins the rushing battle on, when USF is on defense, uh, that'll probably go a long way towards who wins the game on Saturday.